And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Can you back the F up? Funny? Yes. I would pay good money to lick Tom Brokaw's hair. Okay. He had that. He had that hair, that like Lego hair. Yes. That that looked like if you got it wet, it would dissolve like cotton candy. Yeah. But it also looked like it could deflect a bullet. Tom Broca, I haven't thought about him in so long. Tom Broca. Anyway, it's time, Bunny. It's time. It's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to slide to the left, slide to the right, into the second half of our big shoe, and it is second said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing. Our horrible piece of shit movie, and by movie, I mean that instead of a movie, we're discussing the 1988 TV special bullshit fake ass documentary with finger quotes Devil Worship Exposing Satan's Underground. Yes. Da, da, da. Yes. This is the worst. This is the absolute worst. The only good thing about this were the freaking commercials. But this is also like, gee, I wonder how Geraldo wound up at Fox News. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you can see the Why natural progression. Uh, yeah. Um, I can't believe that, like, he became famous because he did the Al Capone Vault Live special. Which was a nothing burger that absolutely failed, but it was a nothing burger that fucking failed that was watched by 30 million homes across America. Yeah. And it's like Geraldo Rivera became famous because he failed so spectacularly. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if that made him famous. I mean, he did have his show, you know, and this this was kind of this this was his show for longer. Yeah. But I think that the best thing to do to kick off our discussion of the 1988 Geraldo Rivera TV special Devil Worship Exposing Satan's Underground is to list off all of the people in this bullshit documentary that can fuck off. Starting with Geraldo Alphonse Capone <coughs> Rivera. Yes. <coughs> the only good thing this man ever did was catch a chair with his nose. Mm -hmm. I mean, the skinheads are evil. White supremacists suck. Yeah. They are the worst, and they're dragging America down with them, but Assholes occasionally do one good thing. Yes. For example, Donald Trump, piece of shit, liar, racist, rapist. He did raise the price. He did raise the age for purchasing vape products. Yeah. And I gotta say, fucking okay, Donald Trump, you actually did one thing that wasn't fucking stupid and evil. Good for you. Yeah. I agree with that. Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt is a gay-hating, education, fearful piece of shit. Horrible. The only reason that more people don't know about Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt is because Florida man. Yeah. But... Um, recently, uh, the, the Oklahoma Senate, they, uh, passed a bill that basically said, hey, our, our hospitals are overrun 
and I know what we should do. Oh, no, not fund them. No, we're Republicans in Oklahoma. No, we're going to just allow nurses to prescribe medication so that doctors won't be so busy. And this okay, this weird ass bill made it all the way to the governor's desk. And Kevin Stitt, who is an absolute fucking piece of shit, said, "Okay, this is this is bad even for me." And it's like, okay, there you go. All right, Kevin Stitt did something good. And this is skin skinhead white supremacist skinheads. They are the worst people in America, and they are horrible. And they are ruining our nation. But kudos to throwing a chair at her role. Yes. Just want to say. And now so, yeah, broke his nose. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. So a few months after this special aired, Devil Worship Exposing Satan's uh, Underground, uh, Geraldo had a, had, it was doing his show. And he had an episode entitled Young Hate Mongers. And his bright idea was, Okay, on this side of the stage, we'll have like black civil rights leaders. Yeah. And on this side, skinhead white supremacist neo Nazis. Okay, okay. What but I need wrong? to I need to interject here, okay? It, Geraldo still still stole his whole shit. From from fucking Morton Downey Jr. Yeah, uh, it was, was the Downey same Downey shit Jr. Morton Downey Jr. was doing, and basically, and then it was invented. Geraldo, and that's how we got Jerry Springer. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! It's all a big. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh. So yeah. Uh. He had a bunch of white supremacist neo Nazis. Shout out chaos! And uh, there was there was a fight broke out, a riot. Someone threw a chair, and Geraldo's like, "My nose has got it! My nose has got it!" Boom! Yeah. It opens up. There's blood everywhere. This muck raking ass hat, douche canoe, cunt waffle shithead, <coughs> Theo Tomas's cabin Mexican. That is a phrase that I coined specifically for Geraldo Rivera because I wanted to call him like an Uncle Tom for Hispanics, but it wouldn't be Uncle Tom. So he's a Theo Tomas's cabin Mexican. Okay. That like, I don't know my culture. I'm a Mexican, but you don't see me going, this is Melin Galindo with an important announcement. Immigrants are horrible. She my special. Hey, you know yeah. he's a piece of shit. Um, this a hole Geraldo deserved that chair and so much more. Yeah. In fact, I had a hard time paying attention to this special because what I was doing instead was I was hoping that you know what? Screw this devil worship, satanic panic bullshit. He should have been exposing the truth behind professional wrestling. That way, he could have been John Stossel. Yes. Which is what he deserves. Uh, MediaMatters.org published a great article in 2007 cataloging. Oh, my God. I do not know how to spell cataloging. Cataloging Geraldo Rivera's long history of sexual misconduct and assault. Including, oh. including allegedly, like sexually assaulting Bette Midler in the seventies. Wow, this man is a piece of shit. Fuck Geraldo Rivera, Al Capone's best friend, can s my lady D. In fact, I've got a Politico article here: top five legendary Geraldo Rivera incidents. Yes, number one is the mystery of Al Capone's vault, the most hyped TV event in history. Yeah. A two-hour special where he opened the gangster secret vault, and instead of finding Al Capone's money or bodies, it contained some empty bottles and dirt. It became a pop culture landmark, the thing that 
you know, Johnny Carson made jokes about it for a decade. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, this is one that I didn't know. Uh, Rivera was covering the controversial trial of Casey Anthony, a woman suspected of killing her daughter. And I believe she did it, but Jesus. Hey, dog, kill him. So, referencing a tattoo that Casey Anthony got in the weeks after her daughter died that said Bella Vida, Rivera said on Fox News, and this man is a journalist. Yeah. He said, stop it, Illinois. He said, I think that it will end the prosecution, the prosecution's case with a bang to show that this was a selfish, narcissistic, self-involved slut. Ooh. What the fuck, Geraldo? You're a journalist, for shit's sake. Yeah. Oh, cool. Now, this one from 2003, I absolutely remember. He was he was an Iraq war correspondent for Fox News. Yeah. And he's like, I'm here in the front lines. Here, I'm going to draw a map in the sand showing our exact position and our exact location. We're going to be going here. And the secret base is over here. We're going to be attacking here. And it's like, oh, my God. You just revealed the time and details of an upcoming military operation. What the fuck, Geraldo? <laughs> you're such a fucking idiot. Yeah, you're just giving away classified, sensitive information on live TV on Fox News in 2003 in the middle of the freaking... And it's so like it's a... so funny, though, because, like, there was a time you have to go way, way back where Geraldo Rivera was a real investigative reporter. Yes. I used to see him on Channel 7, ABC News. He was yeah. the investigative reporter. Now, did he start the trend or did it start somewhere else with with movies and things like that, but like he looked like the investigative reporter, you know, he did. He, did. he had the longer hair, you know, he was the hip guy on the stuffy news channel, you know? Yeah. But, but, but he Serious. broke a major story about, uh, the abuse of psychiatric patients in a, in a major hospital in New York. And this was a big fucking thing. And like, Wow, Geraldo is kick ass, you know, like and man did that fucking ship sail. That is incredible. It's weird to think about that. It, 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 in the same way that it's weird to think that David Letterman was a weatherman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what the hell, dude? You must have been the weirdest fucking weatherman. This side of Steve Martin's movie L.A. story. Yeah. Which I did not like. But, uh, okay, so number four in the top five Geraldo's legendary uh, controversies. In Afghanistan in 2001, Geraldo described on air an incident of friendly fire claiming that he had been on the scene. He said he walked over what I considered hallow ground today and had said the Lord's Prayer on the land where three American soldiers had died the previous day. But the Baltimore Sun later reported that Rivera was actually 300 miles from the site he described. So Rivera blamed his mistake on the fogs of war. Yeah. And said that he had confused the event near Kandahar with one he actually was in in Tora Bora, but then he's lying again because the Tora Bora incident occurred three days before Geraldo's report. Okay. And then number five, and I didn't know this one, in 2005 he traveled to New Orleans, Hurricane Katrina, a New York report alleged that he pushed an Air Force rescue worker out of the way so he could be filmed helping lift an older woman in a wheelchair to safety. Okay. Fucking, I hate Geraldo. He is a piece of shit, and this uh, bullshit TV special did nothing to change that. He is a horrible person. I don't want to hurt him, 
But if I ever see him, no one is going to stop me from trying to rip his mustache off. Yeah. Period. That is just what I'm doing. And if I ever meet any of the actors who were in any of the Batman movies, I'm going to Batman forever it and just go, Batman! Ah! <laughs> just like the greatest line of all time in the movie Batman Forever. Eleanor, what is your deal this episode? You just want to be in front of the camera? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the number two person who can F off, Joseph. Joseph. The alleged U.S. military <laughs> intelligence officer who came out and no. exposed the satanic cults that are taking over the U.S. military? Yeah. Total bullshit. Total bullshit. Our army, as well as our nation's army, as well as our entire nation's air force, is filled to the brim with alcoholic straight C students who beat their wives and girls. That is just yes. They're not into Satan. They're into Joe Rogan and oftentimes men. Yeah. So screw Joseph. So much of this movie is uh, of this documentary is absolute BS, and it's just muckraking uh, Geraldo trying to uh, get more uh, All Capone's it was, rating. It was, it was just, a, you know, it was a build-up to be, like, such a big fucking thing. But all it was was a longer version of his show that they showed at yeah. night. That was the only... And I, well, everybody I, on that cat, everybody that on that panel, I had seen them on Geraldo before. Yeah. I remember the, the woman with, like, the obvious wig and the big black glasses. Like, I remember seeing her on some show. Yeah. Okay, this is one that I really wanted to talk about. I need you to go somewhere else for number three. I'm serious. Number three and four, I need you to go somewhere else. Not just right there. I need you to go to another room. You went to the room right in, you know what, whatever. Number three, the permed 80s mall. Her yeah. son killed someone in the name of Satan. And then the mom is all, I should have paid more attention to the music he was listening to. Those album covers. Yes. Those album covers, they're so evil. Bitch, please. No one ever killed someone solely because they looked at an Iron Maiden album cover. You freaking weirdo. Yeah. Let me tell you who is to blame. So a teen killed another kid in the name of Satan. Let me tell you who's not, first off, let me tell you who's not to blame. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. Satan. Iron Maiden. Wasp. Yeah. They were a crappy glam band. Yeah. They were not, they were not like, and Geraldo keeps mentioning them like a satanic band and it's like, go and Google 80s band Wasp and all you'll see is a bunch of effeminate dudes with a coke problem. Yeah. You will not see a bunch of freaking Satanists. It's ridiculous to think that people legitimately thought that the band Wasp stood for we are Satan's people and that by listening to one of their albums that you're going to be fucking possessed by a devil. This whole time was weird. This oh, whole God, time was yeah. absolutely weird. But we're but we're back and, there. I mean, it's a variation. We're absolutely but, back there, right? But now. this is the sat drag queens and transsexuals are the new satanic panic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I am absolutely not seeing any differences here. Yeah. So, uh, a son, a teenager killed another teenager in the name of Satan, and the mom's like, "Oh, the album covers." The album covers. It's not the album covers' fault. It's not Ozzy's fault. It's not Iron Maiden's fault. And it's not Wasp's fault. Their music isn't that good anyway. It's the mom's fault for raising her kid to believe that in America in the 1980s, the devil was 100% real, walking America's streets and making kids kill people. That is who to blame. The mom and not freaking Ozzy. Yeah. Ozzy. You had a love if anything, 
Good if God. anything, Ozzy should have had a sitcom in the 80s because then the satanic panic wouldn't have happened. If he did the Osbournes back then, well, Ozzy could have mm-hmm. No, he, 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 well, he did get arrested once because he peed on the Alamo. Yes. It's a long story. It's a long story. Uh, number four. But Ozzy just real... Ozzy just looked so wonderfully. I'm really not sure where I am right now. <laughs> hungover. He, he looked very hungover. I've I've hey, I lived with my brother for a long time. I know what like hungover and drugged out looks like. And so that's what he. And then like, they only he, asked he was him like definite... two questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number four, and I'm so happy to say this. Hey, I will say this till the day I die, shouted from the rooftops, and it's not because I go to church. I have always felt this way when I was a atheist. I felt this way. Number four, Anton LaVey. He is the P.T. Barnum of Satan. Oh, my God. The dude played a calliope. Okay, I mean, like. Yeah. Okay. Is, he is a P.T. Barnum hus, huckster. Anton LaVey is L. Ron Hubbard with less sci-fi and more origins. Yes. And that is it. Period. Like I've always said, like I've always said, like I, I've read the Satanic oh. Bible. It reads like a Molly Hatchet cover. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It is yeah. ridiculous. And then they show all of these Satanists like uh, like David Berkowitz and like, like really? These are not Satanists. Okay, um, Charles Manson is not a Satanist. He's a drug out hippie that got way too pissed at the Beach Boys. Yes. And decided to uh, listen to the White Album on acid and oh, Ringo just told me to kill people. Yeah, and also have a, a party under the sea with an octopus, but that's a different story. Uh, we're you guys go kill people now, but that's not that's not that has nothing to do with the '80s satanic panic. You're just clutching at straws here. Uh huh. You found a crazy person who who ran a cult and said, "Oh, I kill people in the name of Satan," and it's like, "Oh my God, Satan is real." Satan is attacking. No, the 80s were just a horrible time. And yes. we're reliving that again. The 80s satanic panic is just QAnon, uh, QAnon watching a Jane Fonda workout VHS. Well, okay, but it wasn't just the satanic panic. It, it was. It was the satanic panic and offshoots. But offshoots included pedophiles are everywhere yes you know and they're just gonna grab your kids off the streets yeah Remember, uh people were the getting their kids shit. fingerprinted in the fucking malls all the time yep yep and it's so funny that the that the parents in the 80s who were saying oh stranger danger don't take candy from strangers strangers are gonna try and kidnap you you got to watch out for strangers. You can't trust them. Those people are now trusting anything they see on the internet. Yes. Oh, kids, watch out for stranger danger in the 80s and then in the 90s. Oh, kids, watch out for what you write on these message boards online. And now those same people are like, according to Moth Diver 666 on this on 4chan, Al Gore is a zombie. Yes. Hillary Clinton eats babies. Tom Hanks worships the devil. Like, oh my God, you guys cannot be taken seriously. And again, it, this, it, is, it, this is all the stuff that I always loved. You know? And, and I... I, I, it never dawned on me that anybody took it seriously. But then I always thought, like I like, know I, I saw watch... the Seraldo special first fucking run. I used to watch Geraldo all the time. 
because he had Satanists and skinheads and all that. I yeah. used to watch Morton Downey all the time. I used I to watch Jenny Joe. believe this bullshit. You know? I always liked Ricky Lake. I always had a thing for Ricky Lake. I always yeah. Liked what was that movie where she pretended to be like a dead person's fiance? What was that fucking movie? During, there was a small period in society where America thought, oh, our next big star is going to be Ricky Lake. How weird that was. Like when everyone was like, hey, America's newest comedy hit, Yahoo Serious. Yes. Like, oh, man. Dane Cook's going to be a star after uh, Employee of the Month comes out. But, like, what happened to Yahoo Serious? Like, because that was a pretty funny movie that I've never watched right. again. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, there's, the same like there's way, some kind of a curse around it. I felt the exact same way when I went to go see The Gods Must Be Crazy. Yeah. One and two. In theaters as a child, the first half hour of The Gods Must Be Crazy is a legitimate documentary. Yes. And everyone complained and walked out. Way before the actual plot showed up in the movie, and it was fucking hilarious. It was basically the same thing that happened to my uh, parents when, as young people, they went to the Douglas, Arizona drive-in and saw What's Up, Tiger Lily. Yes. It was like the first 10 minutes of that are all in Japanese. So, uh, fuck Charles Manson, fuck Anton LaVey. Um, in this documentary, and I'm so glad that you brought up that, you know, the satanic panic and all that, and the, and the, the pedophiles are everywhere, because Geraldo Rivera mentioned the Presidio daycare scandal. Yeah. And this was during that period in time, during the satanic panic, where people legitimately believed that America's daycares were entirely satanic places where you bring your kids to be taken care of, and immediately they are taken to a dungeon underground where they are raped uh -huh. and are forced to drink blood and they pledge their allegiance to satan and it was all sometimes bullshit. even flown out of state yeah yeah it was, it's total bullshit and so when the QAnon stuff started happening in pizza gate it's like i'm gonna boy. order i got beat your ass we it's like oh my god it's, just, it's the satanic panic all over again but now it's just called Q for some reason. Yes. But it's just the exact same damn thing. And I'm glad that I saw this documentary because I like, I've read books about the Satanic Panic and I've seen documentaries about the Satanic Panic, but from safely in like 2010, 2020, 2024, and they're looking back at the Satanic Panic. And when I read these books and I see these new documentaries, I go, how in the fucking world did people think that this was true? And now I know why. Because people were literally on your television set saying, this is fucking real. Yeah. See me in three months when I catch a chair with my nose. Yeah. Uh-huh. Of course people thought that this were real. Here's a two-hour documentary saying this is actually true. Satan is coming for your kids. Don't put them in daycare. They can't be in the army. Exorcisms are real. The devil is alive. He's walking. Uh, the devil, uh, he's going down to Georgia. He's yeah. looking for a soul to steal. He was way behind and he was in a bind. He may be willing to take a deal. Like, oh my God, this was such a horrible time. The Presidio daycare scandal happened and I looked it up because it's like, oh my goodness, it looks like a child might have been molested at this daycare. Oh, wait a second. There might have been more kids molested at this daycare. And then, of course, because it's the 80s and the satanic panic, oh, my God, there may have been as many as 70. And there may have been Satanism involved. Yeah. Oh, my God, Satan got another daycare. Oh, my God, we got to shut down the Presidio. We've got to put all these charges. Here's the person. He was the ringleader. We're going to give him seven charges. 
It's going to be on TV. This is going to be a huge deal. And then they dropped all the stuff. Yeah. But it didn't matter because the damage was already done. The Presidio daycare was all taken down and the man was fired. The man had his reputation ruined. And everyone was still convinced that the satanic panic was real and that Satan had taken over all of America's daycare. Yes. And so oh, here yeah. he is talking but about it. Also, like, the same oh, time of backward masking and congressional hearings. And okay. fucking D. Snyder sitting between Frank Zappa and, and John, <laughs> John goddamn Denver. Denver. You can still see the felt on him from <laughs> Christmas with the Muppet. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Back masking is totally bullshit. Except for those times when smart asses did it on purpose. Like like uh, the Beatles, we will fuck you like Superman and uh, uh, Pink Floyd. But, yeah. okay, number two, you play the Mr. Ed theme song backwards. There's a lot of things about Satan on there. <laughs> I am 100% serious. And you go and listen to it. You go and listen to it. You play another one, Vice the Dust backwards. And sure as hell, Freddie Mercury is saying it's fun to smoke marijuana. Period. Okay. I'm not saying it's on purpose. I'm saying you you play it backwards, and it absolutely sounds like it's fun to smoke marijuana. Absolutely. 100%. Backmasking, not a thing, except for when people actually did it. But I, uh, I Mr. Red is Satan's I, I, I think and it is I think that that's world. just like seeing dragons in the clouds. Yeah. You know, you're hearing yeah. a lot of sound and your brain needs to make some kind of sense out of it. There was a, uh, I had a Muslim friend in college and one day his, uh, religious family had a table at the college and i'm like oh that's my friend i will go and support him maybe i will buy a book i, I thought he was muslim but it was like a it was like an offshoot of muslim and all the books were the most insane shit you've ever heard and i bought one if you see a small cut in the sky that's a cloud if you see a large cloud it's hiding a ufo because the Aliens are secretly controlling us all. Yes. And it's like, oh my god, I remember buying this and going, was this published in the 80s? Because this is some weirdo satanic panic nonsense. But, uh, well, fun well, fact okay, about that, Charles... That just, that just reminded me of a little small thing I've been... Total tangent that I've been meaning to say. Like, everybody is so scared now of AI taking over the world. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, it will Can happen. they fucking do any worse? Can we be serious? Can can AI yeah. taking over the world really be any more fucked up than what, than what humans we're doing. are doing? Yeah. Oh, my God, I've been shot. Well, let's get you to the doctor. I can't afford that. Get yeah. some pliers and remove the, remove the bullet yourself. I'm not going to a doctor. Just the ambulance ride alone will bankrupt me forever. Yeah. Welcome to America, the land of the free and the whole of the rich. No, I absolutely agree with you. Like, fuck, maybe AI will do a better job than we have, because we're sure as hell destroying the planet. Yeah. But, Bonnie, we have four minutes left. Let me see what I can do here. This was fun as hell. Yes, it was. This was fun as hell. And before we wrap up this podcast for good in October, maybe we can do Christmas specials. I know of a movie that we can do every year. <laughs> that, you know, and every year we can do a fresh new take on it. It can be the Pope on Film Christmas special. I think it's just a good idea to think about. Okay. Um, it's a movie that has to do with Santa and a bunny. Uh, and ice cream. <laughs> Not Willy Wonka. Not Willy Wonka. But um, I think that a couple more times this year before we wrap this podcast up for good, because we've done it for a freaking decade. Yes. Yes. I think, I think that we should uh, pick a, a few more things from the playlist. 
Because that playlist is random as hell. And this episode was fun. Oh, yeah. Super fun. Um, so I wanted to, for at first, for our next episode, I wanted to do a movie that I love and that I care about. But then it's like, fuck that. So I found a random movie that I have not seen. It has horrible reviews, but I like the premise. I have not seen it. So it might be shit. I don't know. But it's from 2012 or possibly 2013. It's a little known film called The Brass Teapot. Teapot. Oh, okay. It has nothing to do with War with Warren G. Harding, Albert P. Fall, and the Teapot Dome scandal. But it's an interesting premise. This this uh, couple gets a a teapot, a brass teapot. You have no idea what I'm saying. And they learn. I don't know how they learn, but they learn that if they are holding the teapot. And they hurt themselves, they will get money. Okay. But then eventually, just like a little pinch or maybe a little paper cut, is it enough? Yeah. So they have to find out how far they're willing to go. I haven't seen it. I like the premise, but all the reviews I've seen are like it's certified rotten on rotten tomatoes. So this will be exciting. We will both be seeing it for the first time. Um, yeah, but eventually that won't be enough. It's like a tolerance thing. You have to, you have to keep building up. It has to be. You hurt yourself more and more. So it, it's quite interesting. But anyway, that is next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, Anton Lavey, Geraldo Rivera, a chair. Uh, Maxwell's whistle, Eleanor's whistle, Hugh's whistle. I have to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode. It has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I felt the same way, but I wasn't sure because uh, you're the person who makes that distinction. I didn't want to step on any toes. But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Malin, and on behalf of Eleanor and Natasha, Natasha, sorry, and uh, no, she hates that, and Maxwell and Q and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Really punch it out. And you douche waffles and poopy toy. <laughs> Maxwell? And you leftover pizza? Nice.